Hi, this is a quick little episode to go over my thoughts on a couple different items. One, bankers, you know, how to do a little bit more due diligence when you're looking to partner with a fintech or offering a fintech's products, you know, where to go to and look for the sources to see if, you know, anybody that they have already used, um, if it's been successful. And two, um, Walmart's new launch of their uh, buy now pay letter um, later on next year. Um, you know, as, as a banker and operating uh, surety bank, you know, things to look for when you're being sold by or partnering with a fintech. Um, it can be a fintech. It could be a origination source for leads or anything um, to that effect. What I'm seeing out there are, and uh, I'm sure you guys have all come across, ones that will increase your um, customer accounts. Um, grow your deposit base. So that's been a very common one over the last few years. Uh, maybe they're doing rewards on the front end and then you're holding the deposits. But what I'm not finding is, you know, the average banker, when they're looking at this, they're listening to the salesperson. Um, it's got a great front end. It, it looks beautiful and it's nicer than your onboarding and everything. But, you know, they've already got banks that have been established on their products. Um, do your own research, pull up those banks' call reports, Look at their deposits prior to launching that product and ongoing. You can look at their margins, you know, what they're paying interest on deposits. Look in their other fields to see if the expenses on technology increase. Did that offset their earnings? It's so easy to really see. That's the first thing I default to when anybody's trying to sell me and I look out for. Because the salespeople, they'll name drop another bank. And as soon as they name drop that bank, look at it. Look at their call reports. If they're losing their ass, you know, why would you then buy their product? You know, that bank did it a last ditch effort to expand. You know, their model um, clearly wasn't working. So they went out on a limb to buy this. Uh, and if it's not expanding and if it's not getting better margin, you know, increasing consumers, deposits, um, then don't do it. The proof is right there. So the other day I read an article how Walmart is starting their own buy now, pay here later. Um, you know, they're back at a fintech, um, which is kind of interesting because they've been using, I believe, a firm in their model and they did away with their old layaway program. So, you know, if one part I kind of like this as a retailer is the one that is behind their own buy now, pay later, because if they're using a firm, a firm, you know, another firm, like a firm to offer buy now, pay later for their goods and services, they're clearly paying a fee. And then, you know, we've all seen a firm's stock price is just tanked. So the outlook on consumer goods for BNPL, you know, seems to be pretty bleak. It's it's um, they've gone down really bad in Australia. They've been the leaders and buy now, pay later for years. And, you know, so I do think it's kind of, you know, Walmart would be in the best position to offer BNPL through them because, they're going to see direct result in their serve their uh, margins on their sales, and you know won't be as impacted as bad if there's a lot of defaults in there because they already made it in sales, and they're cutting their costs of having to pay um, another firm to offer the buy now pay later. But in general, you know I don't like the buy now pay here later model when it's on, you know if it's for needed items, you know. It's necessary for things that come up, whether it's dentistry, whether it's, you know, veterinarian services or, or unexpected outcomes, unexpected events um, to take care of, you know, that helps consumers and, and, you know, they don't have the savings. But in general, you know, the theory of buy now, pay later to offer. And so you get, you know, the fancy shirts and go to the club on Friday or Saturday is just completely um you know, I, I mean, that's it's just setting our whole culture up to spend now, to spend future earnings and to add up, you know, that doesn't teach savings, doesn't see incentives. And really, this is brought on to because, you know, our government has left us at zero percent interest for so long that there was that. Oh, go ahead and spend. There's no there's no reason to hold your money because you're not earning anything on it. So, you know, we need to get back to actually consumers being thought out, being trained. We need to go have financial literacy. There's no way in the world, if you can't afford that item that you don't need and is not a necessity, there's no way you should pay it over time. That is just completely asinine. Um, but, you know, there is a good purpose for buy now, pay later models for 
products and services. And I do like the fact that, you know, well, if Walmart's offering it, they're benefiting on the sales. Well, they're also going to get detracted. You know, they're, they're going to um, lose first if people aren't paying on the buy now, pay later model too. Thanks for listening to the paper podcast. If you enjoy these episodes, please like subscribe and uh, please comment on uh, whatever area you're listening to and let me know um, any other topics that you'd like to hear.